This is brutally honest advice for people wanting to retire before 60. I'm a certified financial planner that helps people retire early. My firm has been helping people successfully retire over the last several decades, and we manage over $300 million for clients that we get to serve every single day. And these are some of the most important lessons I've learned from some of our clients to help you be prepared to retire early and avoid some of their biggest regrets. If you're someone that's dreaming of retiring before 60, the freedom could be incredible, but you also might not be ready for it. Now, when I talk with people that reach out or when we put together a retirement strategy for clients, I was surprised at the fact that a good amount of people actually don't end up fully retiring even after putting a plan together showing that they can. And it's interesting because the research backs up my experience and it finds that just 13% of today's workers plan to retire before 60. So the first piece of brutally honest advice I've learned is, do you truly want to retire or do you just want the security of knowing you could if you wanted to. Some people go through the process and when we really dig deep into their goals, we found that early retirement wasn't for them and, and that's okay. A plan can really help reveal this for you. Okay, so number two, if you want to retire before 60, I wanna make this one really practical. This is something that you really need to understand and it's something that uh, is really common for those that wanna retire before 60 and it's what we call the health insurance gap, otherwise known as the gap between when you retire and when you're eligible for Medicare. Now you may have ample assets and you just don't wanna work anymore, but the trick is knowing what you're gonna do or health insurance between now and Medicare. And this was important because there was an interesting statistic that basically highlights uh, the health insurance cost before Medicare, especially for those typically in the 60 year old range, they'll pay around $1,231 per month for a silver health insurance plan on the marketplace. And that's over $14,000 per year annually. Now over a five year period before Medicare, that could be over $73,000 uh, just in premiums. Now this can vary depending on the plan and location, of course, but it's pretty eye-opening the significant amount of cost that health insurance could be compared to what you have when you're working. So the second piece of brutally honest advice from other retirees is just not winging it when it comes to your health insurance. You should really understand the numbers for yourself to find number one, great health insurance and also be in a position where, hey, maybe if you can do some tax planning, uh, that can help make or break some of your costs and really get you get this done. Now, I've seen clients that have millions of dollars spend just hundreds, a few hundred dollars per month on health insurance and others that spend thousands of dollars in health insurance premiums each month because planning makes a lot of the difference. But for number three, if you don't already have a strategy for this next thing, you're probably missing out. Now, the third lesson I think we need to talk about is going to put you in a better position to enjoy the money you saved. And uh, many of you watching most likely have done an excellent job saving for retirement, but I've seen it time and time again where people fall into the trap of using rules of thumb as a basis for their retirement income strategy. And one of the most common ones I see people use for an early retirement is the 4% rule. Now, the main issue I have with following something like the 4% rule, especially for someone who wants to retire before 60, is that you get this incredible array of possible outcomes. I mean, many of you have probably seen an image like this where each line represents your total portfolio balance and it has thousands of scenarios that we run through called the Monte Carlo analysis. And this chart basically says, if you just follow the 4% rule blindly, you might run out of money or you might end up tripling your account value over time. Now, most of the clients I talk with would call that a plan failure if they died with four times their money. I mean, it's not as bad as running out of money, but you unknowingly might be putting yourself in a position of regret, the reality is that the 4% rule is like uh, using a flip phone in the age of smartphones. Sure, you can get by with it, but it really lacks the customization of your unique situation and really the reality of where planning is at today. So my honest advice and the lesson learned from those that have retired before 60 is not just relying on a withdrawal rate. That's not the goal. The goal is to have a withdrawal strategy because these two are completely separate things. One is just a back of the napkin math problem. The other actually factors in your unique financial and tax situation. And not doing this over the span of a 30 year period can be extremely costly. But the fourth thing when it comes to retiring early, I found the next lesson to be one of the nastiest and probably one of the hardest problems that no one really wants to talk about. Because many people call retirement the golden years, a time to enjoy all the fruits 
of your labor over the next several decades. You travel, you upgrade your home, you finally enjoy some of the things you've been pushing off. And for many of you who have planned accordingly, this transition is not a problem. You might be totally fine spending generously on travel, uh, your hobbies or other things, but some of you can find it really emotionally challenging to bring yourself to go beyond just the basics in retirement. And you can be pretty hesitant to spend on the full range of things that would bring you the most amount of joy, even though you have the resources to do so. So my fourth piece of brutally honest advice that I've learned is that especially those of you that are great savers, those habits that got you in a position to retire early, saving well, being frugal, may actually start to work against you. It's backtracking on decades of good habits. So you need to be fully prepared for this mindset shift when you get there. And it's hard to be prepared without having a plan in place. And now this next lesson I've learned from those that have retired before 60 is a little bit sad, but you can't really dismiss it. You need to find a good, a good, pretty good balance to this one. Now, many people, when you're doing the actual planning, you may jump to the conclusion that, hey, how about we set our plan N, or the, uh, just a nice way of saying when you die as 100. Now, some people that's valid. You may have longevity in your family, but the reality is that the life expectancy statistics are clear that the overwhelming majority of you won't live anywhere near as long. And this can unnecessarily constrain your spending. You need to have more of a balance to it. In fact, the current life expectancy for the US in 2024 was around 79 years of age. Now, most people I talk with have taught me that, hey, I wish I spent money earlier on and now they're starting, like I mentioned, to give money away, which can be very fulfilling, don't get me wrong, but there is a better way to plan for this. And this is where I think the planning shift to using a little bit more of a realistic spending, for example, we use actual data in our planning to help get a tighter look on how much clients can realistically spend based on their family history, based off of a few other factors, because most people overestimate how long they live, which leads to a high probability of having an unintended large financial balance that you didn't want at the end of your life. And I think that's because a lot of people don't understand what the research says about how you will actually spend your money when you retire before 60. This is where the retirement spending smile research comes in. And the research finds that the retirement spending smile is really more of a better description for how your expenses are likely to evolve throughout your retirement, right? You have early on, you'll be spending more on travel and hobbies, but then you start to settle into retirement in the middle and your spending generally will decrease. However, in the later years, healthcare tends to rise pretty sharply, and then it starts to increase, right? That creates that U-shaped curve where spending starts uh, high, it dips in the middle, and then rises again in the later years. The truth and lessons learned is that what you think will happen and what actually happens can be pretty much worlds apart. And that understanding can lead to serious underspending and not having a plan that covers all the different stages of your retirement. So let's talk about the last and probably the most important lesson that I have learned. And when people imagine retiring before 60, most answer with a laundry list of activities, maybe traveling, playing more golf, you're gonna go fish, spend time with children, grandchildren, move to retirement community, all these different things. But what if that list doesn't cover the full picture? Now, these activities are what some people call excessive leisure. You know, after sleeping, eating, grooming, and taking care of all the other daily necessities, over the average day, you will have about 14 hours of fill, which is about 5,110 hours a year, and that's over 153,300 hours over a potential 30-year retirement. Now, those activities are fine, but they also can be done to excess. I was talking with a client who was extremely happy to retire, and now they could play pretty much unlimited rounds of golf, but they noticed that golf started to become their new job. So the brutally honest question that you are gonna ask yourself is, what are you gonna to do to bring meaning and purpose into your life? One of the biggest and most brutally honest things you have to think about before you retire before 60, and really anyone retires, is what happens if you wake up one morning with ample money but no purpose? Now, boredom, loss of energy, physical and mental deterioration, uh, restlessness, all these really potentially negative things and not positive outcomes uh, can potentially happen if you don't know what you're gonna do. And the best piece of advice I've heard is not to retire from something, but to retire to something. So here are some amazing questions to help you really dream. And the first one is what activities and endeavors, paid or unpaid, currently make you feel good? The second one is what activities or endeavors give your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Number three, if you were to retire before 60, what are some things you'd like to accomplish in the future. 
And then the fourth question I've heard is, think back over your life, what accomplishments have given you the greatest intrinsic rewards and why? And I think those would reveal a lot and help give you a lot of clarity. Now, I put these questions in a Word doc that you can download and answer for yourself in the description below. I think that really answering these questions can give you the framework to help you decide really if you do want to retire before 60 and maybe it makes it clearer than ever that you're ready. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I make a lot of videos that really talk about the positive aspects of early retirement, but now you understand some of the other things that really nobody really talks about and it can help you decide if you're actually ready to retire early. But ultimately what really can give you a ton of confidence is having a financial plan in place. I made a video going through a case study of someone wanting to retire before 60 and we go through all the different important aspects of their plan that you may wanna consider for your own situation. You can watch that by clicking right here. Once again, this is Matt Calcagno. I'm a certified financial planner advisor over at One Degree Advisors. We would love to help you put together a plan to confidently retire. So feel free to reach out by clicking the link in the description. We'd love to chat with you and I will catch you guys on the next one.